I just got one of the most ridiculous PSA submissions back, and today we're going to check out the grades. All right, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, man, so to preface this, I've got all my cards pulled out of the boxes. I actually have seen the grades on these. Um, for whatever reason, I, I kind of expected this 40-card submission to be very much a dud. Um, but I just got this like feeling when I got the package in, I was a little bit like restless to check the grades. If you know me, you know that I typically don't look at grades before I record videos because I like to have like the raw surprise. Um, however, I, you know, I didn't check the grades online, but when I got the box in hand last night, I actually like couldn't resist to open this. So I did and the grades are pretty ridiculous. So this is the pile of grades that I consider failures and this is the pile of grades that were successes. And let me just say that like 50% of the submission was like a massive, massive success, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so I have them split up. I do have a third little stack here that I'm going to show you first. Now, if you know anything about me, I also like to try to like scaffold into the best hits possible um, or like, you know, music that's called like crescendo when you're like building it up. Um, so if you think that the slabs I'm showing you at first are not that crazy, uh, just wait. It gets really, really beefy here pretty quick. So first off, these are some PC cards. So these are Scythers that I'm adding to my collection. We, we did get the <laughs> Crown Xena Scyther in a PSA 8, which is an awful grade. Um, you know what, I've had terrible luck with these like non-hollow commons and uncommons. I was also obviously going for the OC designator on this Neo Discovery Scyther. This was from a friend of mine who I worked out a trade deal with uh, not too long ago. Um, speaking of trade deals, I actually have two big, big prize cards up for auction on my eBay store right now, so feel free to check those out. I'm actually auctioning off my Grand Party and a WCS Yu-Gi-Oh! promo, um, so a couple of pretty intense cards, so if you want to check those out, let me know. The reason I mention that is because the, the fella that actually, like, traded me the Grand Party, he included this as, like, a freebie in the trade, um, so I'm happy to still have that in my collection. It's not going anywhere. Next up, I have the Majestic Dawn Reverse Scyther. I bought quite a few near, quote, near mint copies of this, and they all turned out to be, like, semi-damaged. Not as a result of, like, pack condition, but as a result of the seller's poor packaging. Um, so kind of a bummer on that. Uh, but yeah, so a near mint mint 8, again, will be a placeholder. This one got an 8 too, but I'm actually not terribly upset about it. I mean, I'll probably upgrade soon. But this is the Reviving Legends Reverse Foil. This was actually pulled from a pack, um, unlike the stamped prize card promo that I showed you a couple weeks ago on the channel that I hit a PSA 10 on. Um, this card is like pretty, pretty rare. Um, at the time that I made this purchase, I had only ever seen like two come up for sale raw and then like maybe one or two graded copies go up for sale. Since then, there's been a few more that have entered the market and pricing is kind of like chilled out in, in accordance to the increased uh, supply. But still a very rare card and we're going to end off on a 10 scyther this is the astral radiance uh common shout out to professor oak he sent me this a while ago in like a free little like care package um it's always awesome when somebody like helps you build out a collection because one like you're able to derive more meaning from the cards i've talked about how like i like to find meaning in the cards that i'm collecting and that has like um, sticking power or holding power um, and the fact that a good friend of mine in the hobby gifted me this means that it is staying forever. So super happy about that. Um, it's always, again, it's always really nice when people are like willing to give you a hand, especially with like crazy goals, like completing some kind of set registry. Uh, so mad respect to anyone who's doing that because it can be tough. All right, next up, we're going to get into this little stack. I consider these to be like quote failures. However, some of the grades are still pretty cool. And while well, some of the grades are still decent and the cards are all really cool still. I'm trying not to grade like total garbage. So you may never have seen a card that looks like this, but this is actually uh, from the 1992 Bandai Card Asp set. Uh, this is Trunks. So this is from part 13. This Trunks got a PSA 6. I had been in talks on and off for like quite a few months with retro specs um he has a pretty fair fair position in these cards i don't think that's a secret um but sorry if i'm blowing up your spot retro um but yeah we've been like talking about like where on earth should we grade these and like psa obviously sustains the most value but they are usually harsh on bandai card stock like these old card ass cards um so we were thinking like bgs i just like uh, YOLO'd it into PSA and I got hit with a brick on that. Another one, 
bricked as well. <laughs> We've got Goku doing the spirit bomb on Planet Namek, uh, hitting the PSA 6. Uh, these next, next two cards are like really awesome, but unfortunately they got toasted as well. This is a PSA 7 Vegeta doing the, uh, is that, no, that's the Big Bang shot or the Big Bang blast attack. One of my favorite cards, period. Like this is probably gonna be a PC item. It just sucks that it's a PSA 7 now. <laughs> um, after that, we've got one more Bandai card ass card. And this is the iconic scene of uh, Gohan defeating Cell. And he has like the spirit of Goku in the back helping him out. Shout out to Gump Brave. Uh, Gump, you're the biggest Gohan fan I know. So I think I thought that you would appreciate this card. Check that out. It did unfortunately get a PSA 7, which I'm a little bit hurt about. Uh, but I'll survive. All right, looking at the stack, it looks like we're getting into a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh next. So this is a mix of Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. You'll see both here. Starting off, we have a PSA 8 Buster Blader. Um, you know what? This actually came from the uh, Curse of Anubis box I got. I bought from Japan. I thought it was like a an open box with sealed packs, and it turned out that all the packs were open, and they were like the cards were just still inside those opened packs. And I was really afraid that I was going to get hurt. Um, we'll see how my Curse of Anubis cards come back later in the submission. So you'll actually get a follow up on that today. But that first one is a Buster Blader that hit an eight, and I did hit three of those. Next up, we have an Umbreon and Darkrai GX hitting a PSA eight. Um, you know, these are just these Sun and Moon promos can be pretty hit or miss. I think, yeah, maybe like a white speck and slightly off center is what docked this one. Um, but tag team cards are like crushing it right now, so I'll probably still get like 35 or 40 bucks out of that PSA 8. Not too upset. Moving along, we've got another Yu-Gi-Oh card, and we've got another Buster Blader 8. So just for reference, that's probably like a $30 card. Um, so it's worth more than the cost of grading likely, but it's definitely not going to be like anything producing a massive margin. Next up, we also got slapped on the Umbreon GX Full Art. We got a PSA 8 somehow. Um, it's a little bit off center, but there's like no whitening at all. So if you remember my last PSA return, there's like a shiny leafy on that also got hit with an eight for the same reason. Like it was like slightly off center on the back, still probably within the 60, 40, um, but they hit it with an eight. So that kind of sucks. I really thought this would squeak a 10. Um, however, that's just where it is for now. Again, I'll probably still be able to get like 30 or 40 bucks out of that card just cause it's Umbreon. Moving right along, we have one of my favorite cards in the hobby. We have Elemental Hero Tempest. This is probably going to be a PC card. Um, Elemental Hero Tempest is one of the big Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I remember pulling from a pack when I was growing up. This one hit the PSA 9. Um, <laughs> PSA really does not like to give Ultimate Rares 10s. Every, there's a misconception that people think that like Japanese cards are easier to grade in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, that's quite not the case. I have graded like some of the grail cards from ocg frank just being frank like one of my goals and i haven't actually expressed this out loud but one of my goals is to become like the most knowledgeable person in north america about japanese Yu-Gi-Oh cards um, i'm learning a lot about them right now and i've created some pretty crazy stuff some crazy stuff that you will see later in this video as well um but yeah they're not easy to grade <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination so please don't don't fool yourself and don't let anyone else uh you know kind of like sway your thoughts there we have another PSA 9 Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wing Man. So this one's pretty sweet too. Probably won't be collecting this card. I have graded two nines of this now. Um, I no longer own the other one and I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, really cool card, an iconic character. And I think I have more of those at PSA right now. I tried to like buy the floor of that card in hopes to hit a 10 and we'll see what happens. Next up, I got wrecked somehow on a PSA 9 with a regular Tag Team GX. Again, with Tag Teams doing their thing right now, this will probably still hit like 30 or 35 bucks. So I'm not terribly upset, but I just love Psyduck and Slowpoke. Like, that is the perfect Tag Team combination. Like, they could not have hit it any better. Um, as you see, we're kind of like slowly getting into better and better cards here. Here we have my Arceus V figure collection promo. Um, I thought this one was cool. It's got Bidoof silhouettes in the background, so how can you not love it? Stinks that it got the nine, but I'll survive. Got about three more cards before we get into some real juicers, so stick, stay tuned there. Here we have a PSA 9 Power Bond Ultimate Rare. So this is a pretty cool pretty cool card if you're like deep into the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. Obviously the foiling looks absolutely killer on this card. I thought it had a chance at a 10, PSA did not. 
and this is our last Yu-Gi-Oh card from this deck, and we have an Ultra Parallel Rare Jinzo in a PSA 9. So these Ultra Parallel Rare cards are like super, super cool. Um, their populations are generally not high, um, so even in like a PSA 9, this Jinzo is going to be like moderately valuable. Um, I'm not really sure how to price cards like this at this moment, to be honest with you, but uh, we'll figure it out, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, Jinzo being like one of the more iconic Yu-Gi-Oh characters, um, I'm sure that card will do pretty well. Just bummed it didn't get the 10. And lastly, we have the Full Art Skyla from Shining Fates hitting a PSA 9. I figured with all the waifu craziness in Japan, why not try to grade some um, English ones as well? Unfortunately, we walked away with... Alright, so next up we're getting into this like 20 card-ish stack of absolute craziness, so get ready, it's going to get wild around here. Alright, first of all we can see that this card, absolutely gem mint condition clearly, we have a poor one Salamence Delta species. Again, most of the cards you're about to see are going to be in my eBay store, so if you're interested in anything or you just like want to make a deal on the side as well, or trades, there's quite a few cards I'm looking for, hit me up because I've got some cool stuff at the moment. <laughs> but anyways, enough plugging. We hit the poor one on the Salamence, so that's pretty cool. And we did it again on this Pop Series 1 Rayquaza. So I tried to go for like popular Pokemon, and these cards were damaged. Like they were just like in terrible condition. Um, I wasn't giving them like the old cam treatment where I'm like crinkling them in my hand. Um, but yeah, so this poor one Rayquaza is pretty sick, and I know that there's a Rayquaza collector or a PSA 1 collector out there that will probably add that to their collection. So we should be getting out of the poor ones and into the PSA 10s, starting with a Silver Tempest Radiant Alakazam. This is like a bulkier PSA 10, but um, I went like, I didn't go hard on Radiant Alakazam, but like I bought multiple copies and I only sent cards that I thought would get a PSA 10 uh, in both English and Japanese. I only sent one English copy, so, and it did get the 10, so 100% success rate. I also sent out a Japanese version, hit the PSA 10. I did that a second time, and wouldn't you know it, I did it once more. So 100% success rate on PSA 10 um, Radiant Alakazams. Thank goodness, because I think 10s of this are only like 40 bucks or less, um, so a 9 would have absolutely been brutal. But this is just a sick card. Like On this one, I don't know whether I like the... Oops. I don't really know if I like the English or Japanese version better. I mean, it's like common for people to prefer the, the Japanese version of cards, but I think that the yellow border actually does this thing right because it, it kind of like complements the Pokemon itself a little bit, more so than like the gray border on the Japanese card. But I think the foiling is better on the Japanese one. So it's like, it's like a give and take thing. I think they're both cool, so you should buy them both. <laughs> oh, too much, okay. All right, so we've got back into another Yu-Gi-Oh card. This one is English, and we have a PSA 10 Blast held by a tribute from Dark Revelation Volume 1. I actually pack-pulled this card on the channel not too long ago, so it's awesome. I have terrible luck with, like, pulling gem mint cards. Most of the cards I pull hit, like, 8s and 9s pack fresh, um, which sucks. So it's cool that this one was able to hit a PSA 10. Not the most desirable ultra rare ever, and it is a re the original reprint from Dark Crisis. So Dark Revelation Volume 1 did come out in 2005. I believe Dark Crisis, the set this originated from, came out in, like, 03, if I'm not mistaken. So it's just, it's still vintage, but it's a vintage reprint. But anyway... Pulled a PSA 10. Feels awesome. I think that card's like pop four. All right, next up we have a 2012 Token World Championship promo. This is the 10th anniversary. I have graded two of these and it's pop six. So I own 33% of the population on this PSA 10, um, which is pretty fire. Um, I actually got this one out of like the cellophane itself. So I, I un unraveled it and took that risk and it paid off so pretty sweet pretty sweet there it's awesome to be able to own such a large percentage of a low pop card um, next up we have a buster blader psa 10 so this is from that same curse of anubis box i did hit two eights and one ten so this one actually is like pretty killer again i'm not really sure how to price this card because it's pop two <laughs> like literally there's two of these in the world um, it's not the highest rarity of Buster Blader from this set, as we'll see later, um, but this is a Pop 2 PSA 10 Buster Blader, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, that Struggle of Chaos box cost me like 100 and 
40 bucks for reference. Um, so there's that. Here we have a Vaporeon uh, character rare, PSA 10. I also graded the Jolteon character rare, PSA 10, and the Flareon, all in a PSA 10. And if you notice, they are sequential certs. Shout out to Mr. Danbot from Catch Em All Collectibles. Uh, Danbot hates the fact that sequential cert premiums exist, but they certainly do. And here is a sequential set that will definitely carry a premium. So uh, <laughs> there's that. I'm really excited to be able to have uh, given myself the opportunity to be able to sell that. So here's my next one. This is a Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh card. We have the Magi Magi Magician Gal. This is from the Shonen Jump magazine. Uh, this is an exclusive Japanese artwork. Kazuki Takahashi was not willing to censor this artwork. Um, and so he put like some pretty heavy limitations on like what the TCG was able to do with it. And they just decided to leave it as a Japanese exclusive card. Um, super popular character, super popular card. The fact that it's exclusive, it has meaning. So probably like a $100 card in a PSA 10. Back to Pokemon, we have the Espeon and Deoxys GX from the figure collection, um, or from the Tag Team Power collection. This is absolutely insane, such a beautiful card. Honestly, if I would have wanted like a PSA 10 out of the Darkrai Umbreon or the Deoxys Espeon, I would have picked this one. Uh, tag teams are going absolutely insane right now. So overnight, this went from like probably like a $60 card to like a $200 card, which is absolutely insane. Like I thought I would take an L on this because I expected it to like just get crushed because it's English. Um, but yeah, so that worked out pretty well. <laughs> Back to some Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh. We have an ultra parallel rare, Parasite, Parasite. This is another censored artwork because the TCG did not like the fact that this bug is coming out of this dude's eye socket and mouth. Uh, it is pretty terrifying to be fair. Um, this is a pop two card if I'm not mistaken. Uh, these ultra parallels are like stupid, stupid hard to grade. Um, and so this is like absolutely insane. I was kind of expecting this to be pop one. However, someone else out there has done the same as me. Um, again, this is like the type of card I have no idea how even to price this because literally two of them exist in the world. It's a censored artwork um, and it's the highest rarity of this card. So I don't know. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. It's pretty sweet. But I do want to be realistic because it's not necessarily a collection piece. Um, so again, if you're interested, hit me up. Here's another one you'll like. We have the Ultra Parallel Rare Buster Blader in a PSA 10. This also is a pop two. Excuse me. So I graded three pop twos in this in this video, or in this submission, and they're like pretty intense cards. Uh, the Buster Blader Buster Blader Ultra Parallel is just absolutely sick. Obviously, Buster Blader is not a censored artwork, but it's more popular of a character than Parasite Parasite. Um, so absolutely insane again. Um, I'm not sure really how I'm going to price that card, so that's to be determined. But hitting such a low pop low pop crazy card that makes my heart happy. <laughs> Next up, we have a PSA 10 Ghost Rare Dark Magician Girl. Obviously, you can see why I graded this card. I think it'll be high liquidity, and this is probably about like 200 or 250 bucks. So hitting that in a PSA 10 is really nice. So I thought to myself, why not do it twice? So I actually hit two of these PSA 10s. Um, I'll probably set one back for Collecticon. I don't know if I've mentioned on the channel yet, but I am going to Charlotte Collecticon. Uh, that is confirmed, and I'm going to be vending there, um, either with one table or half a table. I haven't really decided on that yet. But um, one of these bad boys, or girls I guess, will be in my uh, case at Collecticon, so if you're interested, hit me up there. Now these last two cards... These last two cards are like insane from like a collector perspective, from a reselling perspective. These last two cards just absolutely do it. We have one Pokemon and one Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to save the Yu-Gi-Oh for last because it's a card that like, well, it's worth it <laughs> to go last. The first one, not to discredit it. This is a PSA 10 Reviving Legends Scyther prize card again. I, I know my camera's not focusing. This is the second one I've graded. Like, this is an absolutely insane card. Like, to, to quote Squeaks at Squeaks Game World, this is a juicer for sure. Um, this card is ridiculous. Uh, I, I'm privileged to have graded even one of these, um, and now I have two copies. So, pretty insane. I'm going to be comparing my copies and just like, I mean, honestly, they're they're both 10s, you know what I mean? 
Um, so I'm just going to compare them and see like which one has like the better foil pattern or whatever. And I'm going to keep the better foiling pattern one for my collection and the other one will be up for sale. Um, so I know that there's one listed, like the lowest list right now is like $599, probably more like a $400 card or $450. Um, if I'm being honest with you, but like still that's crazy. I mean, I didn't pay that much for it raw. Now the last card, this is absolutely insane. This is a card that I was planning to add to my personal collection and I just don't know if I can do it now because we hit the PSA 10 on the ultimate rare summon skull from Struggle of Chaos. This is a Japanese exclusive, obviously. We'd never have gotten an ultimate rare summon skull. This You can only get this in Japan. It's a PSA 10 of like one of the most iconic characters in the game. When it comes to like playability, this card was like the champion of the original beatdown decks. Um, <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. I, I'm infatuated with this card. Um, it's probably like like a $600 ish card. I don't know like, and that's like with OCG like Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh cards are not popular Especially in North America like there's not a ton of collectors for these things And so for it to still be a $600 card even despite that like that's pretty crazy um, So I'm a little bit hesitant to sell it just because like I think it's worth more than that to be honest um, but also I didn't pay 600 bucks for this and I was expecting it to nine um, not because it's in poor condition necessarily, but like you guys just saw a ton of gem mint ultimate rares before and they all got nines. So I thought that this one would be no different and they actually blessed me with the 10 on this copy without me having to like crack it and resub it or anything. Um, so just absolutely ridiculous. Probably one of my favorite cards from the submission. Um, I would love to hear from you comment down below. What was your favorite card from the submission and let's hit the outro. Wow, so this was definitely one of those submissions that made me stop and just like question everything in life. I expected this submission to be a major dud when I sent it off, like, and by dud I mean like break even. So on a 400 card submission with a $15 special, it was about 650 bucks after the grading fees. Um, and then obviously I have like the cost of some of these cards, like they're not all like break even cards for me. Um, so I expected really for this to be like a very like narrow margin type submission when it comes to resale value and it turned out to be like a 40 card submission that's worth like over $3,000 or like ballpark $3,000. So in terms of like my quantity to price differenti differential, this is likely one of my best submissions of all time. Um, obviously there's some niche cards here, but <laughs> to the right buyer, these are going to be absolute treasures. Um, I appreciate all of you for tuning in and I hope to see you on the next one.